Hi, welcome back. It's breakfast time, so let's whet your appetite a bit. Hudson Agro, which is one of India's largest dairy companies, has reported a strong set of earnings in the first quarter. In fact, revenues went up over 15%, profits went up 35%. Mr. Chandra Morgan, who is the uh, chairman and director of Hudson Agro, joins us on the phone line to talk about that. Um, Mr. Chandra Morgan, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Can you start by giving us a bit of a breakup on how the revenue shaped up this time? What did you do in terms of curds, ice cream, ghee, paneer? Where was the strongest growth this quarter? Actually, our growth has mainly come from curd and ice cream. And there has been a moderate growth on milk also. So the overall growth has been 15%. The main drivers of growth has been ice cream and curd. Is the expectation for the full year then? I mean, uh, have you penciled in a double-digit growth itself or are you seeing some we, signs of a slowdown? We believe that we can maintain the double-digit growth. And probably we are also focusing on marketing of uh, different types of yogurt and whey drinks. Okay. That probably marketing distribution and other things are getting set. It will take about eight, nine months. Mm. So the full effect will be seen only in the next year. But probably the growth will start occurring in a... a Okay. And just coming to uh, those uh, value-added products and the competition you will face there, Mr. Chandramogan, but uh, are your uh, revenues and EBITDA better than expected because uh, you are gaining market share? I mean, this was a theory put out by some uh, 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 political economists that uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh and uh, Gujarat, because of the beef ban, are seeing a reduction in their dairy industry and that is benefiting southern uh, dairy companies. Could you make inroads into the north? No, actually, it's the beef ban and the dairy growth in south that has got more relevance as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. In reality, probably the beef cutting is only for the life of a beef, giving milk and also getting the final rate. It only forms about 3%. Okay. 97% is coming from milk and other things. Okay. I don't think that this is going to affect in any way. Okay. okay. What about competition? Uh, you know, not just from MNCs, but from domestic uh, cooperatives as well, whether it's a quality, uh, Amol, ITC, Parag Milk. Are you um, seeing increased competition in, in, in this challenging environment? Competition is always there, but probably the market scope is also, also there. So probably we are just going on our own pace to get into the market and uh, probably we are mostly into the short shelf line products in south and maharashtra okay B which is the uh, value-added product that gives you more returns you know of ice creams uh, curd paneer which is the uh, one that you would concentrate on for margins no in fact probably i would say branded business but the leadership is the real thing and it's not that value-added product as is being proclaimed. Okay. Even milk is a profitable business, ice cream is a profitable business, curd is. Mm -hmm. But if I fail to be a market leader or top three of the particular market, then whatever the value added product, it doesn't take us anywhere. Which are your most promising brands in that case? So probably the milk brand Aurobia is a prominent brand. Mm -hmm. Curd probably we are the number one corporate brand in the country and we are also in ice cream. I believe that probably we are the number two next to Amul mm -hmm. in ice cream. As the other guys are doing frozen desert and all that. Okay. In ice cream category also we have become national number. Okay. Uh, what is the debt on the books? Sorry? What is the debt on the books of the company? Uh, this is approximately about 950 crores. Okay. Oh, okay. What kind of capa uh, capacity utilization are you at now? And what are the uh, plans to increase it? Actually, we are almost at 85% capacity. New <laughs> capacities are getting added up in Maharashtra soon. So we will be running to 90% capacity by year. So how would the revenue EBITDA targets look like for the year? No, we believe that the EBITDA target can be more or less maintained. But probably the revenue growth will also be in the same model. As a matter of fact, 15 to 18% we can trade. Oh. Okay. Oh, 15 to 18% got that. And your debt of 950 crores, any plans to bring it down? Uh, where will it be, say, over the next 12 to 18 months? No, actually, the rights issue, whatever the remaining money that has to be collected will be collected soon. Mm. Then to bring in 107 crores. Okay. And the inflow itself is good. So, EBITDA has been about 171 crores this quarter. Yeah, yeah. And the inflow is getting better and better. Probably we are not really worried about debt. 
that oh, will automatically come down in the next two and a half years. Mm. Maybe after three years, we will be a zero debt company. Yeah, actually, if you have a bid of 800 crore, then servicing a 950 crore debt is hardly a, a problem. I see your point. Thank you very much, Mr. Chandramogan, for joining us. Uh, certainly a great pair of numbers uh, for the market, but uh, it's not a heavily traded stock. Uh, we'll have to wait and see whether people are, the trading appetite is also vetted. Well, let's move to the one stock that's going to be the focus of our attention today, Reliance Industries, that one reports earnings today. A weak quarter is expected due to margin pressure in Reliance Geo as well as uh, weakness in pet chem business. I'm just telling you what Sonia told me some time back. But uh, let's hear it from our entire research team. Uh, they are uh, lining up to get you. You've, we've got uh, Sonal to tell us about the pet chem business, uh, Mangalam to tell us about the retail, and uh, uh, Reema to tell us about the geo. Before, and I'll come to you for your final comments. Uh, so Sonal first. Thanks a lot for the, the, that, Lata. Well, uh, the refining business this time around is uh, set to improve moderately. If I just put the macros into perspective, well, the crude prices were volatile. They have increased on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. There's a sharp decline on a YY basis. The Singapore GRMs, they have actually, uh, in, they are down 42% on a YY basis and are up 8% sequentially. And that will lead to improvement in GRMs this time around. So we are expecting GRMs of around $8.5 per barrel. This compares with $8.2 per barrel that we saw in the last quarter. They will improve because the spreads on the major products have improved. So the gasoline cracks, which were at a 32 quarter low last quarter, have improved moderately. They are up 44% on a sequential basis. And Singapore GRMs have also improved. And that is why refining is expected to improve this time around. Even the volumes are expected to be strong. On the other hand, the pet chem business is expected to be weak. In fact, the EBIT is expected to decline. So last quarter, we saw a decline of around 3% in pet chem EBIT. And this time around, some of the brokerage are expecting a decline of around 12%. So Jeffrey says that the EBITDA for the pet chem business that peaked in the year gone by, that is FY19, and the lower ethane prices, that is a raw material, that will help, but the spreads on a lot of products has actually okay. reduced. Uh, That's why pet chem is expected to be weak. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, defining good pet chem weak. Uh, on Geo, Rima? Well, uh, Lata, the number which could surprise or shock everyone is the margins expected to contract very sharply to 27.5%. This is an account of the creation of Invit because now the payments that you make to your tower as well as fiber SV, SPV will be treated as an operating expense. But consequently, there will be a reduction in the interest as well as depreciation. So the impact on the bottom line will be negligible. So we're working with about an 85 9% revenue growth. Margins, as we said, will come down very, very sharply to 27.5%. The two other internals to track, one will be subscriber growth. The net subscriber growth has been slowing down for the company on account of the big base, this time seen at 25.8 million subscribers. And secondly, the average revenue per user because of a bigger, you know, of a greater uptake, offtake in uh, the geo phones and people using the 99 monthly plan, the ARPUs have come under pressure. So that will be the other internal to track. Okay, thanks for that. And now Mangalam, uh, how big is retail? Retail is big enough, Lata, and over the last few quarters, we've seen tremendous growth come by. So high growth rate is now in the base, so we expect some growth rate moderation out there. The key to track this time around for Reliance Retail's numbers would be how they do on the margin front. At scale, how do the margins pan out? And mind you, I use the word moderate growth with a bucket of salt because moderate growth for Reliance Retail means 48% as against the 100% that we've seen over the last few quarters. So 48% growth in the retail uh, uh, retail verticals revenue, 38,380 crores is what Nomura expects. But the EBIT out there, we expect a jump of 87%. 2,000 crores is what Nomura is pegging the retail EBIT to be at. That means a margin expansion upwards of 100 basis points. 5.2% is what the street is working with. Over the last few quarters, we've seen the retail margins expand, and that's primarily on account of increased growth coming in from the grocery and lifestyle retail business. That accounts for about 28.5% of their overall retail business, but that's the one which is growing upwards of 60%. So higher contribution for that or from that would lead to margin expansion. Two numbers to watch out for, 48% growth in their retail revenue and 87% growth in their earnings. 
Uh, well, thanks for that, Sonia. You, uh, what could the consolidated picture therefore look like? Well, the numbers are expected to be weak. I think that's factored into the stock as well. The stock is down 10% from its 52-week high. Uh, now, on the consolidated numbers, uh, just to give you the key numbers to watch, revenues at 1.43 lakh crores is what we're looking at. That's a growth of 3.6% quarter on quarter. Margins will fall because of the reasons we mentioned. Weak pet chem business and weakness in RELGEO margins. And the profits will fall about 5% at 9852 odd crores versus about 10,300. 60 crores. So, you know, weakness because of two reasons, Petchem and Relgio because of the creation of that invit. Okay. So, with that, let's get to the um, uh, uh, analysts. Uh, Prayesh Jain of Yes Securities joins us on the phone line. Uh, Prayesh, uh, are you also expecting a, a, a fall in the profit? Yeah, on a sequential basis, uh, at part level, we are expecting around a 4 to 5 percent decline, and the, the pressure is mainly coming. Uh, coming from the uh, from the pet chem side. Oh. Okay, uh, Prash, hi. Good morning. So pressure from the pet chem side, but what about Relgio? Um, you know, there is of course that creation of the invert. No one can really predict which way that would uh, impact margins. But on the subscriber editions, they too have slowed down. So do you expect some weakness there? Uh, see, overall we uh, we we worked with a 30 million subscriber addition and a uh, ARPU of 124. So, yeah, there is some slowdown, that's for sure, uh, in, in that terms. Uh, and uh, on profitability, as you know, as you rightly said, there could be, you know, big movements and how they have worked out the rentals uh, bet between the Invits and, uh, 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 and the, and the Relgio parent company, that will, will have to be seen. So, that there could be huge, huge moves out there. Okay. And uh, how would you look at the price of the stock, therefore? And uh, uh, forecast for FY20. See, we, we are we have been absolute buyers for Alliance Industries for quite some time now, and even at these levels, we are uh, quite bullish on the stock. And we have a target uh, one year target price of 1725, and that mainly comes from the fact that you know there is a big move of the Alliance's business from a B2B model to a B2C model. The share of revenues and profits are constantly increasing, and they are likely to increase further going ahead. So I think there is a re-rating uh, that is required and the street seems to be undervaluing, especially the uh, land retail piece of the business. So we remain uh, a, a buyer in the land industry with a one-year target of 1725. Okay. Uh, just one word then on the, we spoke about Petchem, the weakness there, Relgio, the creation of the Invit and how that could impact. What about uh, GRNs? The you know, the consensus is $8.5 a barrel, but what are you working with and do you see any improvement there? See, we're working with $8.4 per barrel, but, you know, one of the elements that needs to be considered is that, you know, possibly this quarter could see some meaningful contribution from Petco gasifiers, and while we haven't accounted for that yet, uh, if that happens, then there could be some positive uh, surprises there also. Okay. All right, Prayesh, we will touch base with you after we get the numbers uh, to check whether it meets with uh, your expectations and if there is anything in the fine print that we need to take note of. Okay, uh, so that'll be the big boy and we will chat about this uh, and uh, hear from our in-house uh, uh, researchers as well. Uh, uh, again and again, just to remind you on what the numbers are expected to be on the street. With that, let's go to the FNO strategies. Chandan Taparia of Muthilal Oswal is waiting by. Good morning, Chandan. What are your uh, traits today? Good morning. Uh, first, talking about Nifty, on last trading session, we have seen some call writing at 11,700 zone and market fell to surpass its 50 day mark. So, some sort of consolidation and decline could be there in the market. However, lower volatility also indicates the support could be placed at the lower zone, but call writing clearly indicates that upside is restricted in the market. In last trading session, we have seen that selective FMCZ and uh, NBFC and couple of uh, counter from the heavyweights, including the banking stocks, were doing well while advanced decline was negative. So we have selected the trade based on the few positive and the negative bias. First it is buy on McDowell. This stock has seen the open interest addition of around 16% in last four to five trading session and surpass is falling supply trend line on the weekly scale. The stock is making high rise, high lows on the daily scale and now a small follow up can trigger the short covering really in the counter. So recommending to go long on McDowell with a stop loss of 590 and here we are expecting a move to us 630 levels. Second trade we have selected from the media, that is the Z Entertainment. The Z has taken support and now negating its formation of lower top, lower bottom on the daily and the weekly scale. The stock has seen the put writing activity at the immediate strike. 
and because of that some of them cannot be ruled out in the counter. It has seen the open interest addition of around 12% in last four trading sessions. So recommending to go long on Z Entertainment with a stop loss of 349 and here also we are expecting an up move towards 380 levels. Uh, third trade that is on the negative side that is uh, buy puts in Tata Motors. If I talk about the Nifty Auto Index that is given a breakout and trading near to its uh, three years low levels, we have seen a breakdown of the bearish flag pattern on the auto index. So most of the auto stocks are likely to be under pressure. And here we are recommending to sell or trade in puts in Tata Motors by 160 put near to 2.5, put a stop loss of 50 pesa. And here we are expecting put to go double for five to six rupees on immediate basis. Okay, well, thanks uh, Chandan for stopping by and giving us those uh, ideas. We'll take a quick break on that note. We still have about 10 minutes before the pre-opening rates kick in. IFL Sanjeev Bhaseen will also join in with some long-term stock ideas in a bit.